I bought both of these faulty electronic items off of eBay in the hopes of fixing them and then selling them for a profit. Welcome to the next episode of the series. In the latest episode, we actually made a profit of £197.90. However, that is no longer accurate. The Xbox Series X that I fixed then broke after I fixed it. So for that reason of being completely honest and transparent, I have minus the £325 that we were going to sell the Xbox Series X for. And now for the last video, we're in a minus £104.68. I just update this to minus £104.68. That takes our total profit of the series to minus £182.17. If I get lucky and buy just the correct items on eBay, we can easily get that back into the profit. And hopefully we've done that in today's video with these two. I paid £105 for both of these items. And what are they? Two Nintendo Switches. If I could fix both of these, I'll be extremely close to getting back in to the positive. Enough messing around, let's start with this one and try and fix it. This Nintendo Switch specifically has no power and condition wise, it's not that bad. We don't have many scratches on the screen. It comes with a kickstand, which is always a bonus. Now, have we completed the Holy Grail? Do we get a game? No, we don't get a game. Do we get an SD card? No, we don't get an SD card either. Believe it or not, it comes with all screws that I can see, which is lovely jubbly. That gives me good hope. First thing I'm gonna check is this charging port underneath the microscope. The reason I check this charging port is just before I apply any current to it, I wanna make sure there's no pins crossing. So you see those gold pins? We have a line on the top there and a line also on the bottom. And to be honest with you, this port looks okay. If I give this voltage when it has a bad port, we could damage the internal circuit of the Nintendo Switch which is why I always like to check. The port itself doesn't seem wobbly, so it seems pretty secure. The only thing I would say is that the clasp has just started to come unclipped at the top. That's why you've got a little bowed bit up here, but not bad at all. This does in fact mean that I can use my ammeter to test and see how much current this takes. If we plug it in, what we're looking for is this to light up with at least something, which it does. What does it tell us? Tell us a story. Oh, okay. So it appears we actually have a working Nintendo Switch, which I'm extremely confused about. Let's go ahead and, okay, so that Joy-Con connects. Let's see if this Joy-Con connects. Oh. So this Joy-Con isn't connecting, and I know that the Joy-Con itself is fine. Just double check on this side. That one definitely is connecting. This one isn't. Okay, so this might be a really easy fix then. Oh, I've run through the setup, I've connected to Wi-Fi, I've updated the system. The Joy-Cons work wirelessly with no issues. It works in a docking station. I'm just about to test the game and make sure that's all good. Put Mario Party in. Yeah, the game reads, no problem at all. Micro SD uh, slot as well. Does that bring up a message? Yep, it does. Just use a tiny little drip of isopropyl alcohol just to quickly clean the screen. Now, as much as I love making content and having content for the YouTube video, it's also nice to sometimes make a quick buck. So I would have purchased this Nintendo Switch for either 50 or 55 pounds, and I should be able to sell it for 100, which is great profit. I'll play a game on this off stream just to make sure we get a, a decent bit of runtime from it before I end up selling it, but all of the tests seem to be A-OK. -okay. I've just put some isopropyl alcohol down here, and the Joy-Con rail that I had an issue with before, every single time, now just clicks into place effort effortlessly. And if I wiggle it about, it doesn't disconnect, and it's exactly the same with this one over here. So I don't know if maybe that was an issue before and the contacts were a little bit dirty down here, but I'm not having that issue now. Nonetheless, it was sold as no power and it definitely powers on. And for the record, it does also charge both ways. So I think the port itself is also okay. I'll put it on charge and make sure that it goes to 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that we have not fixed that one, but it counts. Sometimes that little bit of luck is needed. I'll look at switch number two now. Depending on how this goes, I do have a third item up my sleeve. So if the video is a bit too short or uninteresting, I will get that one out. Moving on briefly and quickly to Nintendo Switch number two. This one doesn't have the rear kickstand, but same things apply. We seem to have screws here and a screw here. Do we have the ones at the side as well? Yes, we do. So this switch is actually in very good condition. It's also got a screen protector around the screen and the screen protector itself is spotless. It's just got my grubby hand marks on it, but this is a really, really, really good condition Nintendo Switch. Same as the first one, I guess, supposedly. This one doesn't power on, it has no power. So you know how we do, back under the scope to see how the charging port is looking. Are we cooking? Good looking. Same rules apply. We're looking for any bent gold pins that you can see on the top and the bottom. And to be honest, this port looks Unbelievable. Factory. Very, very clean. Not really any debris inside other than little bits of dust that you can see. Oh, that screw does look a little bit stripped though. So that's meant to be a Phillips head. So yeah, you see how this one is definitely got the Phillips groove. 
This one looks like it's been stripped a bit. What about the one on the top? How does that look? That also looks like it's been stripped. So somebody's at least definitely taken the back off of this console. Even before I go ahead and plug the charger in, I'm just gonna see if it turns on by pressing the button. No, it doesn't, okay. At least this one definitely has no power or at least no charge. So if we take our ye old ammeter, which I'll leave a link in the description down below, an affiliate link. If we go ahead and plug this in, what happens? So we get 14.8 volts, which is regular amount of voltage. We're looking for 15 volts, that's what the switch takes. And we've got 0.17 amp draw. Now, if I'm being honest with you, 0.17 is normal for a battery that is completely drained. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave it for five or 10 minutes and just see if the current increases. If we see 0.17 amps jump up to around about 0.5, 500 milliamps, it means that the battery on the switch is taking a normal charge. It then goes up to around about 700 milliamps or 800 milliamps when it's fast charging. I've left this for not even five minutes, I'd say it's been two minutes or so. It's jumped up to 470 milliamps. Remember I said around about 500 was the sweet spot. So that is taking a normal charge. If I try and turn it on, I get no change here, but what's more interesting is that we don't get the battery icon on the screen to indicate that it's charging. For example, this is the Nintendo Switch that we just looked at. If I go ahead and put this on charge, you should see in a second, yeah, so you see how we have the battery symbol, it's gonna turn on now, but that's the battery symbol that we should have. This to me would indicate that we have an issue with the screen, or it could be a backlight issue, it could be anything, which is actually a real shame because the screen on this Nintendo Switch and the housing itself is in really good condition. The best thing to do in this scenario with a Switch like this is test it in a docking station just to make sure that the Nintendo Switch actually works. I've just gone to plug it in, it felt a little bit weird. If I look here, the micro SD card isn't there. And this bit is actually bulged out a little bit. I don't know if you can see. So it didn't fit snugly into the case. Instead of putting it into a docking station, I'm just gonna take the top part off and see what kind of damage we're dealing with here. There seems to be a screw on the rail as well that's sticking out. It looks like it's sort of threaded and I now can't get a Joy-Con down the side of the rail, it gets stuck. God, I just managed to get it out. There's also a strip screw here, which I can't get out, which usually means that you have to break the plastic, but Gonna try one more time. That's not coming out, which is a shame because, like I said, the uh, the case itself is in really good condition. Just as I thought, what they've done is put the connector on underneath this metal shield, which our uh, Lord only knows what impact that has had on the circuit because they've screwed it down as well as you can see and they've bent all of the metal. All right, this is coming off now. What damage can we find? Not looking too bad, except for obviously <laughs> the card being down here. So let's just go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna head over to the scope real quick just to inspect here. How is this area? Uh, connector seems to be fine. We've got the backlight cable here. That seems to be all good. It was on the speaker, uh, but the speaker again looks to be okay. There's no broken solder connections or anything. Ooh, this wire might have just, just escaped the damage, uh, or maybe not actually, because I don't know if this but it doesn't look like it's been torn through, uh, but that's something that I'll definitely have to bear in mind because this wire actually goes this side of the connector. Come on, there we go, that's better. So they had put it back incorrectly and lodged the screw in here, which again, I don't know if this is damaged or not. We'll have to inspect it if we manage to actually get this console working. But yeah, backlight LCD seems fine. Remember, this is no display, I think. So if we go up to the LCD ribbon connector here, how does this look? This looks okay. I mean, it doesn't really look like somebody's tried to take this out before, but signs of somebody going into this Nintendo Switch, AKA our foam up the top has been ripped, which means that somebody has definitely taken off the, or maybe they got like halfway, because it doesn't look ripped it doesn't look ripped all the way. And has this been taken off? Maybe, it's really difficult to say. If we just do general inspection down here, this all looks okay. We don't have any water damage. This is the water indicator down here and it doesn't look like any water has gone through onto the circuit itself, which is really good. M92 looks hunky-dory. I just wanna note that it's now coming up as zero amp draw. So I thought if I went ahead and tested the battery to see what kind of charge it's got, it's got 3.6 volts, which is enough, it's plenty, it's almost full, well, I think they got up to around about four volts because it's a 3.7 volt battery. I think it can go up to like 4.2 at full charge. But that's now coming back as zero amps. So it's not taking any current. In my opinion, that's gonna be something with BQ or M92T36. I'm gonna disconnect the battery. 
Maybe that's our issue. Maybe the actual screen itself is okay. Let's go over to the scope and have a quick poke around. So here we have M92 T36. We'll check around here first of all. So I've got the meter in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a complete circuit. So if we just have a quick look, do we have any shorts around here? So this is, okay, so this component here is shorted to ground, which is the capacitor that links to P13 on the back of the board or Pi 3. Do we have any shorts here? No shorts on these caps, nothing here. Okay, and dreaded supposedly CPU cap, which is linked to a number of things on the board is also okay. But this one isn't, so it could be Pi. This is our BQIC, so we'll check around here. See if we got any, so we've got a short on this cap as well. I had a short on this cap and it's coming up as one ohm. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's a short to ground. If I put my meter into resistance mode, I'm gonna see how many ohms we have here. Yeah, one ohm. Well, well two, it's coming up two ohms minus my leads. You're probably looking at a short to ground, dead short to ground, I think. Bear that in mind, continue with inspection. Any shorts anywhere else? No. So we have a short on this cap here and we have a short on the P13 cap here. I'll remove the board out of the chassis. Now that everything is detached, do we have a short on this cap? Yes, we do. All right, so now we have an issue because I don't know if it's gonna be the P, uh, P or Pi 3 chip or whether it's gonna be N92 T36. Bearing in mind that we also have a short on this cap here. I don't know if this one links to P13 or whether it links to M92. It could also link down here to the Max IC and maybe this could be the cause of all of our issues. What do we have? Do we have a short down here? We have a short to ground here as well. So uh, to, be, to be honest with you, it could be our Max IC that's the issue and this is a short to ground. Uh, that's about 240 ohms, which is fine. These inductors are fine. It's just these caps here, look. So that's a one ohm short. That's a one ohm short. So this is short to ground on both sides of this cap. Also short to ground on both sides of that cap. And this is short to ground on both sides of this cap. I think there is just one thing that is causing this short to ground. And to be honest with you, I think our best bet is to just inject on this cap here to see what lights up because they all could be connected. But I'm also tempted just to go ahead and remove P13 because that will most probably alleviate this short and I'm assuming this short, but it might not as well. I think the smart thing to do would be to inject voltage to see if that will show us the culprit. I think, I don't know, this is a tough one. Could be this max chip. Let's inject, let's inject. I'm gonna start at 0 0.5 volts and see if anything gets hot. I was injecting uh, 0.5 volts and nothing was getting hot. I was specifically injecting on this cap here. However, when I put up to one volt, which is the max that I was kind of happy to go with, if I show you, look at the isopropyl alcohol that I've just put on. Whoopa. Ready? Look at that. BQ, you see this corner? There is a corner on the BQIC which is causing the IPA to evaporate, not dissolve, as I may have stated in previous videos. You see how it's evaporating? So, our culprit, I believe, for at least this short, is gonna be the BQ chip. I don't know if that's gonna alleviate this short because this, this board might have more than one short. I guess it's, it's unlikely, but when I inject into this, I can't see anything getting hot on the heat cam. So I think my first play is to remove the BQIC and see if this short goes. BQ removed, do we still have a short on this cap here? Meter is in continuity mode again. Do we have a short? No. Okay, that's really, really good. So we don't get a beep on here, which means that BQ was the culprit. And then if we go over to the max IC, has this short gone or is it still here? Okay, good. So the short around the max IC has now disappeared as well. I think in one of Northridge Fix's videos, try saying that a thousand times, he states on many occasions that the BQ IC is linked up to the max chip as well. Just need to finally check and make sure that this short has gone. No, okay, so we still have a short around M92T36 and I'm assuming Pi 3. 
Yeah, we still have a short here. Okay, all right. I'll firstly take off M92 T36 because in my experience I've had with Nintendo Switches, this seems to be the more common issue rather than the Pi 3 USB chip. But worst case, we just take them both off. Has that got rid of our short? No, it hasn't. So maybe that M92 T36 IC was absolutely fine. Yes, we still have our short here. So I need to take off P13. Has our short disappeared? No, we've still got a short. Okay, so I've injected on this cap as well and nothing else seems to get hot. Let's just check around here. I've had this component go bad before as well. Okay, that's, that's shorted to ground on these caps on both sides, yeah. So these are short to ground and I believe this side is not meant to be shorted to ground. So is it this little BGA again here? I'm gonna eject on these caps and see if anything happens because that also must mean that I have my short here still, right? Yeah, I still have a short here. BQ's off the board and that alleviated this short, but we still have the short here. But the Max IC caps here, they're fine now. Okay, there's a lot of things wrong with this board. I'm just gonna inject on here, starting with 0.5 volts. Again, I just also wanna clarify that all of the places that I'm injecting are dead shorts to ground. They have no resistance going through. They are connected to ground. What I'm about to show you is the weirdest thing ever, right? Let me just go ahead and remove the EMMC, which is the memory. Do we still have a short here? No, we don't. There's no short, which alleviates the short from here and also gets rid of the short here. So, something's wrong with the EMM IC. This is a BGA chip here, but this is the chip, I believe, which is married to the motherboard. And without this, you can't use the switch. So I'm just gonna check this little cap here. Is that, is that ground? I don't know. Okay, so assuming this is ground, we don't have a short on this cap. No, that cap seems to be okay. We've got a few other caps here, and I'm assuming again, this is ground. Okay, so that cap is short, this one. That one isn't, that one isn't. This one is as well. Okay, so I've got a short on this cap and I've got a short on this cap. Again, I'm gonna inject 0.5 volts on this cap and see if it's the actual IC or whether it's one of these capacitors that's causing this to not work. Imagine if it is, that'd be amazing. Doing this the lazy way, I'm just gonna put a bit of isopropyl on it. Okay, and if we go to inject here, I think it's, I don't know if this cap has got, it's definitely going somewhere. Oh, is it this cap? You see that? Put the isopropyl back on. Oh no, I don't know if it is that cap. Maybe it is. Or maybe it's this, okay, right. This cap isn't shorted. This cap isn't shorted. This cap is. And this cap is. I'm just gonna take this one off. Okay, that one's off. Let's check now, see if our short's gone. Oh, okay. So I have continuity here, I don't have continuity here. I think that cap was shorted. Now, I'm being honest with you, I, I, I don't know where the cap's gone. It's not on here, is it? No, because I could have measured the cap to 100% confirm. Is it on my iron? Yes, perfect. Was our short on this cap? Oh my lord, can you hear that? We have continuity running through the capacitor, which means that this cap was shorted. This was what was causing all those shorts. I don't know what importance it plays uh, on this rail particularly, but I am gonna replace the solder on here and just put a new cap on, just in case. Let's put some flux on just there. Just a teeny tiny bit of solder just there. There we go, I've got the replacement here. We're just taking from a donor. Let me just take this little guy, solder it there, wicked, and just rotate, solder it there. Perfect, little cleany Bosch. Make sure it's not going anywhere, make sure it's nice and soldered correctly. I'll just get rid of some of this flux, because I don't want to heat the board, you see. I could heat it to around about 100 degrees, but again, I it's such a small board, I'd 
don't want to risk it. Not bad. And it's definitely sold it, right? Okay, and do we get anything now? No, nothing. Good stuff. Okay, we should be good to go. Put this back on the board. Okay, now, do we have our short on here? If we do, I'm out of luck. If not, we're laughing. Yes! No short, there we go. Remember this side as well. Cool, no short. And just finally, no short. Would you look at that? I'm gonna put the old P13 back on and I'm also gonna put the old M92 T36. Then I'll quickly test for shorts. I'm gonna put a new BQ on because that was obviously affecting this component here. But all we would have used is that tiny little cap which you know counts for one P or maybe even half a penny and a BQ IC. everything put back where it should be. Do we have any shorts on any of the places we did previously? No short there. Need to clean that up. Do we have a short here? No short there. Do we have a short here? No short there. Down where BQ was. No short on this cap, which is where it was before. And finally, no shorts around the Max IC as well. Nice. So the only thing we've really changed is the BQIC, like I said, and the cap that was on the EMMC. Now, let's put this back into the chassis and see if it works. If it does, I'll be flabbergasted. Just as I was going to put this back together, I thought, I'm just gonna check in the LCD connector as well. And can you see that there is the tiniest pin just over here, which is loose from here. I'm not saying this is why we didn't have an image in the first place, because we've obviously just fixed a lot of the reasons why we wouldn't have had an image, but this definitely counts to something because the LCD is not gonna work with a bent pin like that. And I've been able to do this once before, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it again. I just need to try and lodge this time. And when I, like this pin is microscopic. Tiny, tiny, tiny. I couldn't even tell you a measurement because I don't think it would exist. Thing is, it'll go all the way back here, won't it? I need to try and get the blade all the way down without damaging anything else, which is almost impossible. No, I think it's too, I think this one's too far gone to be honest, which is annoying because I was nearly there. Bit of extra force on it that time. I don't even know where the pin's gone now. No, I think it's too far gone. Okay, and I've just bent that gold one down there. I'm gonna have to take this off and replace the LCD connector. Like I said, I think someone was in this before, so it must have been when they tried taking it apart and putting it back together. has been soldered on. We just need to make sure that everything is solid. Uh, I'm just trying to think best way to do this. And these pins are extremely fragile, so I need to be super careful. Just want to make sure they're all on. They look it. Because luckily you can just get a soldering iron and get on these pins if you need to after it's been soldered to the board, because they're exposed. But that looks all good to be honest. Like these ones looking, I don't think I need to prod these ones. As long as that front line is good. Yeah, that looks good as well. Nice, okay. Just to triply check that all of these pins are good, which is what I did check beforehand. But yeah, you see, nice. Let's put this one in the case. Moment of truth, everything's a little bit messy at the moment, as you can uh, as you can see. But I just wanna check and make sure that this is all good. I've plugged the LCD in and I've plugged the backlight and the battery. Here we go. What do we get in three, two, one. Our meter comes on 0.34. Do we get anything on the screen? Yes, let's go. All right, sweet. And it's just turned off. 
It's turning on. Yes, come on. 850 milliamps. And also the EMMC must be okay because it's remembered what it had previously. I'm gonna turn it off, put it all back together and just give it a real quick run through, make sure it can read games, etc. But I am ecstatic about that fix. I've never had an issue like that before. A short on the BQ and the memory, nuts. Let's put it back together. I've reassembled to the point where I've put the back cover on because I, I always want to make sure that the fan spins I nearly dropped it then. That would have been amazing. Turn it on. 0 0.04, 0.06. That's not right. I bet I didn't connect the battery. I did connect the battery. Oh, I disconnected the battery and reconnected. Oh, we're on now. Oh my God, I had a heart attack. Wow. Oh, it's just turned off. Wait, what happened? Now we get nothing, zero amps. Again, take out the battery. Plug my amp meter in, I'm gonna get zero current. Okay, so I get 0 0.07, 0 0.09. Take that out, plug the battery in, turn it around. Now I get zero amps. Not like this, please, not like this. The fuse is still good. Is the battery dodgy, maybe? Could be the battery. 3.6 volts, I mean, that's not bad. But now we're pulling a full flat zero amp draw. Let's see if we've got any shorts again. After checking, I'm not getting any shorts on this side of the board. The only thing I think it might be is that perhaps when everything blew, the M92 chip that I've obviously just put back on is maybe faulty as well. Even though I'm not getting any shorts around that area, the chip could be shorted internally. And very commonly when you get a zero amp draw, it's usually the M92 T36. Bearing in mind, I've just put a brand new BQ chip on. I think I'm gonna replace that M92 chip. I'm telling you now, I did not come this far with this Nintendo Switch for it to now not work. That is not an option, I'm afraid. Okay, M92 T36 has been changed. I've got the battery, I've got the LCD plugged in and the backlight like we did the first time round. Do we get anything? No. So it's still zero amp draw. It could be BQ. I'll double check my work around BQ. All right, attempt 4,792. Uh, BQ did look a little bit out of line. Um, I can't imagine that was causing it, but you never know with solar in, so let's test. What happens now? Okay, good, 0 0.36, 0 0.47, we get backlight. Okay, we did have something on the screen, is it turning on? Yes, okay, it's turning on. I need to, again, put this back together and see if it works. Serious case of deja vu here, this is where it stopped working before. So, three, two, one, please work. Okay, 0 0.36, I've put the back on, it's the silver cover, and it says that it's charging. It's gonna turn on, so that's gonna shut off, it's gonna restart. This should bump up now to about 800 milliamps. There we go, 920. Okay, touchscreen, does it work? Yes, it does. Okay, sweet, touchscreen works. We don't have any parental controls. Speakers? No? I can't hear the speakers. And they're up fully. And I've definitely plugged both of them in. I'm just doing an update and I'm gonna reset the system to see if it's some sort of software issue. I mean, I guess the good news is that it's on a step further than what I was previously. After doing a little bit of research, it looks like the Pi 3 USB IC, which is the one on the back, the rectangular one we replaced, is responsible for the audio. I have hooked the Nintendo Switch up to a docking station and I can see the switch on the dock and it works perfectly fine. And I think there's audio, so I don't know if it is gonna be the Pi 3 IC. I don't know if there is another audio IC somewhere on the board that is specific for the speakers, perhaps. But either way, I'm gonna to have to get it fixed if I wanna sell it. I can't really sell it without sound. Just for the record as well, I have tried putting in other speakers and testing it, but that's not works. After speaking to the man, the myth, the legend that is Phil the Coder on YouTube, he's pointed out that this Realtek IC is what's responsible for the sound on the board. I can't find anything obvious around it that seems to be shorted or that would cause it to not work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this chip, then test and see if it's resolved. If not, I'll probably go ahead and just change out P13 as well. Oh, 
I've got it's got to be attempt like 5,000 and something now. I've put what I need to back, but I've also kept the silver shield off the back as well. So we're just going to turn it on and see if we get any sound. If I'm okay, it turns on, which is a good thing. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I don't think I am going to get any sound, but maybe I'm just being a bit too doubtful. Who knows? Okay, so we're on the home screen. I'm turning the volume up. The speakers have been plugged in. Ready? Here we go. Yes. Okay. We have sound. Sweet. Let me just check it works in the dock. There, the docking station. Does the dock still work? Yes. Okay. Good. I'm going to put it all back together real quick and just give it a final test. Please pray for me. Final moment of truth. It's now back together as it should be. We're going to check for a few things. And look how beautiful it's, it's turned out, by the way. Plug in this way. Do we get charging and fast charge this way? Yes, we do. 860 milliamps at 15 volts. Turn it over. Do we get fast charge on this side as well? 15 volts. Yep, 800 milliamps, perfect. So it charges both ways, that's really, really good. Just to confirm we have sound. Yes, we do, it sounds glorious. We know that the game cartridge slot works because we tested that before, real quickly with the Joy-Cons. Perfect, this one, perfect. Do they work wirelessly? Yes, they do, wicked. So I think this one is now good to go. That's two for two, but you know what it always boils down to, and that's Sally's spectacular spreadsheet. Okay, Sally, give us the good news. Our cost, like I said, was 105 pounds. I'll say three pounds for the Realtek IC we used for the sound, and I'll say five pounds for the M92 T36 Power IC. Plus then I'd say two pounds for the BQ. So we're talking 10 pound in parts in total. Nintendo Switches sell pretty well, and they sell for 100 pounds each. So we've got two for sale. That gives us a total of 200 pound sale price and a gross profit of 71 pounds and 20 pence for today's video if we go ahead and look at our total and put in here 71 pounds 20 our total profit currently is still minus 110 pounds 97 pence we're getting there i've also learned so much from today's video i hope you have to check out the previous episode in this series just about here thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one peace